Okay, so I pick up part two of this battle at about 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, as you can see, the the French have formed that, that, that line hinging on Hassenhausen, and the Prussians have effectively moved in to surround the French. The Prussians certainly have the upper hand and the initiative, and the French at this stage are really just trying to hold the line and prevent a breakthrough. This is entirely my fault, controlling the French. I should have used Davout's core more effectively. They could have outmaneuvered the Prussians in the early hours. Davout can activate his entire corps and maneuver his three divisions quite effectively, whereas the Prussians can't respond very effectively in the early hours. They can only really manage one or two activations. In fact, in addition to Davout's core and the three infantry divisions, he could also activate the light cavalry as a second manoeuvre unit, so they could have a lot of manoeuvre advantage over the Prussians in those early hours. They failed to do so. They let the Prussians grab the initiative, and now they're in a, a bad position. This French line hinging on Hassenhausen is very weak. There are a lot of battalions with just two to three incrementals left you can see on the far right and on the far left in particular, some of those units are very weak. The units you can see behind the front line sort of holding back reserve, those sort of uh, small companies of infantry, they are also very much reduced. So the French very barely uh, hold this, this thin line against the Prussians. And at this stage, I anticipate very soon the Prussians will break through. At about two o'clock... The Prussians strike with an assault right on the hinge of that French line at Hassenhausen. They fail to break through, but they continue to launch waves of assaults over the coming hour or so. As I said in the, the last video, in the first part, Schmettau had been really occupying that centre ground without doing much, and by by this stage, around 1.42pm, He's finally sending his division uh, into action as sort of the, the divisions on the left and right, Prussian divisions, are a bit exhausted. He's, uh, these Prussian assaults have mixed success. There's a, a lot of Prussian disorder, uh, so they assault the lines, they disorder, they pull back. Eventually they do manage to get a, a minor success just on the left-hand side, southwest corner of Hassenhausen, where they do force, finally, force the French to, to rout. Uh, but it is a very minor success in some pretty exhaustive waves of Prussian assaults on that French line. Again, this is my fault. I haven't been managing the assaults very well. I've been basically sending in these quite full-strength Prussians into assault these relatively weak French positions, but they've just been failing. I've been rolling terribly and uh, the Prussians have been very limited in their ability to, to break through. And you can see as, as Schmettau is assaulting the French, centre of the French line there, Kalkruth's reserve corps is, is forming up just to the southwest of that position. You have Kunkheim's 1st Reserve Division and von Arnhem's 2nd Reserve Division. Um, Kunkheim in particular has some very strong uh, guards units and... Um, some Grenadier battalions, and they have very good morale. So I'm, my plan is to uh, send Arnim in first, uh, with, again with some very strong infantry uh, battalions, Grenadiers and so forth, with good morale, and then follow up with the, the guards to hopefully finish off what's left of that French line. By about 2.43pm uh, in the afternoon, the, the Prussians have really managed to batter the French around uh, Hassenhausen, the, the left side of Hassenhausen in particular. And so on the sort of the eastern side of the battle, uh, Vortensleben decides to send his division back into action as well. And they again launch a series of assaults on the French line. And you can see that over the far east, uh, east of Hassenhausen, on the right side of the French flank. Blücher's cavalry is briefly active, and they force some of those French defenders into square. French light cavalry are just there guarding the right side of the French flank. Again, not much success for the Prussians. They do manage to force the French back in one area, 
and there's a, a small gap appears in the line, the French line on the far right. But elsewhere, the line holds pretty well, and Vorten's even really exhausts his division through these assaults. At one stage, I launched three almost full strength Prussian battalions on some infantry in square on the far right of the French line. And they failed. Two of the units disordered. Uh, another one um, managed to um, maintain order, but the French position held. And this enabled the French to sort of reorganise a little bit. They're bringing up some more, oh, I can't really call them reserves, they're really remnants of shattered battalions that are really just trying to fill gaps in the line and, and slow down the Prussians, prevent them from exploiting any gaps that, that, that appear here. Now, following following Wartensleben's failure and Schmettau's exhausted assault, von Arnim begins to strike at the centre. Uh, you can see him hitting the line west of Hassenhausen. At the same time, the Prince of Orange is activated in the very far southwest of the battle, and he uh, launches some assaults on a very weak French left flank. Again, designed just to push that flank in a little bit, put extra pressure on the French. Now, just slightly northeast of that left flank, the French hold a relatively strong position. Three strong artillery batteries right in front of the uh, of Kunkheim's uh, first reserve division. Really deters the guards from assaulting just yet. Um, the Prussians are kind of hoping that they can push the French back near Hassenhausen. Prince of Orange can push that left flank in and they won't have to directly assault those uh, artillery pieces just yet. The Prince of Orange finally has some success in assaulting on the left flank and they do push those French, um, that French flank back a little bit. The French pull back their line in the southwest and von Arnhem's assaults near Hassenhausen also have some very small successes. Faced with, I guess, the risk of Prussian exploitation to that gap and with the guards right behind, the French at this stage decide that they're going to try and pull back out of Hassenhausen. And they gradually begin to withdraw their troops to a line, a new line, running southwest to northeast, just behind um, and partly inside of, of Hassenhausen. Again, that, that line, that French defensive line, is very, very weak. Um, two to three incrementals on most of those battalions. But if you look at the Prussians, they're, they're disordered throughout the line. They've also suffered quite heavily. Schmettau um, and Wharton's, Lieben's divisions are exhausted. The Prince of Orange is still quite strong, and of course Arnim and the uh, Kunheim's reserve divisions are very strong on the left-hand side. Now at about 4.40 p.m. the guards are finally sent into action and they, they launch a series of assaults. They do assault those French artillery pieces that have been left out in front. The idea here is that uh, two versus one attacks, guards, division, uh, guards, battalions, very strong, great morale, elite units. I'm hoping that they can force the artillery to uh, rout and thus destroy them instantly. There is a very, very thin line. You can see the French line to the right of those artillery, behind those artillery pieces, consisting of um, infantry companies. You know, one, two, the sappers strength one, a very reduced, um, a couple of re very heavily reduced uh, infantry battalions. So if we can break through those artillery pieces, the guards can push onto that, that French new line and really there's, there's nothing much left of the French behind those, those artillery pieces. Unfortunately... The assaults, again, fail terribly, and all those guards' battalions are disordered. Look at the situation at about 5pm. The Prussians are just disordered everywhere, uh, and they're forced to pull back to recover disorder and, and form a new line. So the French, by 5pm, are exhausted, battered. There's a very thin line holding that defensive position. Davu has certainly been defeated. He's failed to exploit um, his early advantage. But the Prussians just can't break through this this French line, uh, launching wave after wave of assaults, but with very little success. There's only two hours left of the battle before it's dark, 
and the Prussians are going to uh, probably continue their assaults, um, but this time maybe avoiding the artillery, trying to go around and try to really focus on those really weak points in that French defensive line. Over on the right, Wartensleben and Schmettau are exhausted, so most of the action will take place uh, to the left in Hassenhausen and to the left of Hassenhausen down to the southwest where you've got Arnhem, Kunkheim's 1st Reserve Division with the guards and the Prince of Orange in the very far left southwest. That's where most of the, uh, the fighting will take place. Again, just to reiterate, all these Prussian problems are my fault. The French failure to capture initiative is my fault. Just um, basically poor playing, poor planning, poor tactics. I mentioned earlier the sort of congestion caused in the middle because of the placement of the Prussian artillery. Similar problems between divisions not being able to move, uh, to navigate around the field. It's just it's too bunched up. The divisions are becoming mixed up a little bit and it's difficult to organise command. All my fault in really planning quite poorly um, in those, those early few hours, which really had um, just a, a follow-on effect throughout the, the rest of the battle, the rest of the day. Once you start that congestion in that road northwest of Hassenhausen, it's hard for you know, divisions to manoeuvre. Artillery can't cross that river, so they have to follow the road. They have to stick sort of north of Hassenhausen. It's hard to get artillery, Prussian artillery, southwest. And, um, yeah, the French were too too um, complacent and settled into that um, defensive position. <laughs> 